um, directed energy weapons. I gave that proposal to the advanced projects research team and asked them to consider it. The only word that I ever got back from them was that they said it was interesting and they would say no more. Tesla certainly spoke of a very large series of very powerful weapons. I think that's a reasonable thing and let's approach it this way. Certainly I'm on record as saying the weapons exist and that several nations have weaponized them. We know that the Russians very early on were interested in things like free energy run out of the vacuum and they were interested in weapons. What became of Tesla's weapon? It's never been heard from since. It may be something that's in a closet somewhere. It may be something that's used. It may be in orbit. We don't know. There is no question today that the Soviet Union has these weapons. And if what I put together is correct, and I'm absolutely convinced it is, three other nations of the world also developed those weapons and resoundingly checked the Soviet Union. The other three are friendly to the United States, not hostile. And I think that played one great part in the fall of the Soviet Empire. Three other nations today are indeed working on what I call the Tesla weapons, or really scalar electromagnetic weapons. And these nations are not really friendly to the U.S. at all. So it's a much more dangerous world that has emerged. In an article published November 3, 1998, Bill Gertz of the Washington Times writes, the Chinese army is building laser weapons and already possesses particle beam weapons capable of damaging sensors on space-based reconnaissance and intelligence systems. If the People's Liberation Army has beam weapons, what about the U.S. military? Under promise of anonymity, this Navy SEAL spoke about current capabilities. We do have particle beam weapons. I've used them. We did underwater tests off the coast of California. The capabilities are awesome. You can knock down a satellite, a ship, a plane, anything. In the global race for new technology, it appears that Tesla's death beam is not the only secret invention that supposedly disappears when he dies. On July 4th, 1976, the celebration of America's bicentennial, a strange new signal is monitored on ham radio frequencies. This high-pitched chattering is dubbed the woodpecker signal by the Central Intelligence Agency. They have no idea what it is, but they are able to triangulate its source to a Soviet transmitter in Latvia. The Soviets had experimented with creating artificial aurora not sure what their objective was, but uh, I think it was probably uh, designed to prove that you could uh, project very low frequency energy over the horizon, over great distances, and cause certain effects. You can induce virtually any effect that a chemical can cause in a living system with a, um, an external, primarily extremely low frequency magnetic field. My personal feeling is that primarily, I think, it was designed to communicate through submarines. On July 13, 1977, at 9.19 p.m., the woodpecker signal abruptly stops. A strange corona forms around Edison Electric power generators servicing New York City, and the entire city is suddenly plunged into darkness, creating chaos and confusion. The blackout is similar in its effects to Tesla's Colorado Springs experiment, that overloads and sets ablaze the local electrical power plant. Uh, you know, things start to brown out. Uh, uh, we started seeing very strange things happen to New Yorkers who went berserk. Uh, it was literally absolutely dangerous to be there in New York City. And it was a headache for police and, and who knows, all the security people around. Was it Tesla's secret that electricity could alter the mental state of human beings? If so, was that secret delivered into the wrong hands? And who is responsible for the Tesla-inspired program known as HARP? A government project, some experts believe, is the first stage of an entirely new phase in weapons technology. War or peace? Which does science serve best? Tesla described himself not as an inventor, but as a discoverer. But with discovery comes responsibility. 
Tesla knew this when he developed Harp technology, and many think that his fear of what might happen if Harp fell into the wrong hands motivated him to keep his discovery under wraps. Harp exists because Tesla theorized back in the 30s that he would be able to stimulate the magnetic field of the Earth in such a way that he would actually be able to create a shield around the city. Harp is um, basically a design experiment in terms of atmospheric physics where a large array of antennas, it's not just one antenna, it's a very large array, it covers several acres, um, are broadcasting into the ionosphere of the planet a very, very complex series of waveforms. And these waveforms are designed to specifically couple in with the ionosphere, which is a resonant cavity. This concept involves heating up the ionosphere in a manner similar to a giant microwave oven. That a small input, like a pulse of a certain number of watts in, can create, create a large output because whether accidentally or intentionally, it's possible to tap into this sea of energy around us. It surrounds us and goes through our bodies and is everywhere throughout space. Harp's original designer conceives it as a shield for missile defense that can fry the circuitry of incoming bombs. Harp was designed to, uh, for a number of applications. It really was not set up as a weapon. Now, if you read the patents, I was thinking of ways to use it defensively. He also claims that by superheating portions of the upper atmosphere, HARP can affect global weather patterns, a concept Tesla was ridiculed for nearly a century earlier. One of the real dangers of HARP is that we, have con that we concentrate with HARP in one very small area of the ionosphere. We create a lightning rod effect. We create a lightning rod that can distort the magnetosphere of the planet, which is the magnetic shield of the planet. Not only are you sending energy into the ionosphere, but you're providing a path for energy to come back down out of the ionosphere. The electrons and energy will come from all over the ionosphere to that one point, and it will strike the ground in a bolt that is a hundred times greater than any lightning bolt imaginable. Kind of like three or four Mount St. Helens volcanoes going off each second. The true power of HARP technology is not yet known, and there is no civilian monitoring agency. The possibility that HARP may be capable of enormous planetary disruptions, including weather changes, global warming, or even slowing the Earth's orbit by shifting the shape of the ionosphere, may tell us why Tesla suppressed the blueprints for this invention. He stopped his power shield defense project in 1905 because he realized that such a resonant system of five towers around the globe could cause a tremendous destruction of humankind. Not long after, Tesla's money runs out. His main supporters either die or sever relations. As his anonymity increases, he continues with even more esoteric research. He was very much concerned with being able to utilize the phenomenon of resonance to do certain things, not the least of which was to uh, destroy certain materials. And that was evidenced later on by that uh, experiment he did on Wall Street where uh, a new building, steel building was 